Half of my job is explaining real estate terminology to sellers and buyers. Hi, this is Beth Helvey with Couture Real Estate. I hope you're doing good today. So let's get started. One of the first things that you're gonna hear about is an appraisal contingency. Appraisal contingency is something that you have if you have a loan. Now, within the state of Florida on our contract, you've got 30 days to get that appraisal in and get your appraisal taken care of. If you have a property that does not appraise and you get that appraisal in within the 30 day time frame, you do have the option of exiting the contract and keeping your escrow. You don't have to do that though. There are other options that you have available to you. One is the seller can make up the difference, you can make up the difference, or you and the seller can split the difference. I've seen all of that happen. Basically what this means is that the lender is not going to loan on the property above that appraisal price. Uh, the other one is you're gonna see best and final and you're gonna see highest and best. These phrases um, do really mean two separate things, but they're used interchangeably. Essentially what they're asking for is the buyer to submit the best offer they have and the best terms that they have. Um, when that does come in, chances are the seller is not going to counter, although I've seen that happen. Sometimes the seller counters on minor things like a closing date or an inspection time frame. They don't always come back to you and counter on the offer price, but I have seen it happen. Escalation clauses are something that we're not seeing as much of as we had. Now we will see them on special properties, what we like to call unicorn properties. Basically an escalation clause is you saying that you will go from your con your offer price up to a certain price within certain increments. In order for that to happen, you then expect the seller to give you proof that someone outbids you. So they're gonna have to submit to us typically the first page of the contract showing what that contract price is. Um, and then your, your escalation clause kicks in. And there's advantages to this. Uh, the advantage is that you incrementally go up in price to beat out somebody else who is competing for the same property without having to go all the way up to whatever your top number is. Um, and it does help kind of um, eliminate some other people that may have made an offer on the property. Um, when everything was crazy last year, there were many sellers who decided they didn't want escalation causes. They just called for highest and best and then chose from there. Uh, we're not seeing escalation clauses that much, but I have seen them occasionally. Um, a bridge loan. A bridge loan is a short-term loan that you can get where you're basically borrowing on the house that you currently own in order to pay for the house that you're going to buy. And then when you sell the house that you currently own, it pays back that bridge loan. But it helps you get into the property you want to buy if you don't want to take out a loan or if you just don't have all the cash. Um, I don't see a whole lot of bridge loans. I do see them occasionally, um, but we really just don't see that very much. There's other options you have if you uh, don't want to take out a loan or if you um, need the extra cash and you can't sell your house or you're still living in your house. There's other options. Um, your debt to income ratio is simple. It's how much money you owe versus how much money you have coming in. This includes things like student loans, car loans, um, any rent you might be paying, uh, all of your credit card bills. Um, if you're paying child support, that counts as a debt. If you're getting alimony, that counts as income. Um, it includes all of that. And what they're looking for is that your debt to income ratio is balanced enough or balanced well enough that when you take on an extra debt, such as buying a house, you can pay for it. And that's something that is looked at and studied when you apply for a loan. Your earnest money deposit is what we like to call your skin in the game. So in the state of Florida, when you go under contract, you have up to three days to deposit your earnest money, and that is a negotiable amount. There really isn't a standard that we see. Of course, the higher the price point that you're purchasing, the higher your escrow money is. Um, and there is an option for a secondary escrow deposit. Some people will deposit a second amount after the inspection time frame is over. That is your skin in the game. That basically means that if you walk away from the contract, you are giving up that money. The only exception to that is if you are getting a loan and your property doesn't appraise. Um, your pre-approval. Your pre-approval is when you go to your lender prior to looking at houses and you find out what you can afford. And this is really important right now because you wanna find out what you can afford, what that monthly payment is gonna look like and see if you're actually comfortable doing it. I mean, let's face it, you do not wanna be house poor, especially in Florida where there's so much to do. 
Um, so the pre-approval is really something that you want to get done. And, and I encourage all of my buyers to do that before we go out looking. It's different than a pre-qualification letter. A pre-qualification letter is not as in-depth as a pre-approval. It's basically a fill in the blank. So you wanna make sure you get the pre-approval and not the pre-qualification. Private mortgage insurance is something that you're gonna find if you have a loan. Now, if you deposit 20% or more on your loan, then you will not have to have private mortgage insurance. Um, private mortgage insurance isn't your insurance, it's your lender's insurance. And if you default on that loan, then that is basically money you're giving your lender to help make up for the fact that they're now stuck with a house. This is a fee that you pay every month on your loan. Now, if you bought your house a couple years ago, chances are very good that you may not have to pay your private mortgage insurance anymore. So it's a good idea to reach out to your realtor to see if your property has appraised enough that you can get out of that. The exception to this rule is if you get an FHA loan. FHA loans have private mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. So it doesn't matter how much money you put down, you're gonna be paying that private mortgage insurance. So I hope these few definitions help to kind of guide your way through the contract and through buying property here in Florida. Um, if you have any other questions or if there are any other definitions you'd like to have, drop them in the comments. I'd love to see it. This is based on an article. I'm going to post the article in the comments as well, so you can just read the article for yourself. This is Beth Helby with Couture Real Estate. I hope you're having a good day. If you get outside to enjoy some sunshine and encourage you to do so, wear your sunscreen and drink lots of water. Bye now.